Now we have covered the seven primary energy centres and their relating tarot cards and encoded numbers, let us look at the remaining cards within the Major Arcana to help us better understand the evolution and processes of the Twin Souls as they ascend back up the seven gates to reunite with God Consciousness and be crowned as an illuminated soul within a new cycle. Let us first start with the number 10 Wheel of Fortune card. This card is symbolic of the destiny and journey of the Twin Souls. Not only do we see the infinite cycle symbolized by the number 10 when divided by the Trinity, but also the covenant and destiny of each twin soul is represented in the two fives within the number 10. There is a wheel with eight spokes symbolic of the immortal soul with each spoke relating to a different point in the cycle and journey of the soul. On the top of the wheel we see the Sphinx is representing God's presence within the soul and the will of God upon the destiny of the twin souls. The sword the Sphinx holds is symbolic for the word or law of God and we see this in these verses. Ephesians 6 17 the sword of the spirit which is the word of God and Hebrews 4 12 for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword the half dog half human creature is symbolic of the hierophant and we can see a similar representation of the Hierophant in religious symbolism and even Anubis who is present at the weighing of the heart ceremony. The Hierophant is related to the covenant of each soul. This is the pact each soul has made with God and that each soul must uphold. On the bottom of the card we see the twin souls represented in both the physical and the ethereal by the beasts with wings and we see at the top left we have the angel representing the divine forces and the bird is symbolic of the ethereal. This card is relating to the knowledge and understanding of ourselves that brings us to the path that leads us back to the union with the divine. The next card is number 11, Justice, and we have looked into the relating energy center, the navel and solar plexus, which is the location of our car soul, and the point where we access and express our power from. The navel chakra is symbolic for the third gate, and shows that it is the right and just soul that moves beyond this gate to the heart. And we see in this verse 2 Chronicles 1.11 And God said to Solomon, Because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honour, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet hast asked long life, but hast asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people, over whom I have made the king. So it is the knowledge and wisdom of the soul that illuminates the path of righteousness and the soul instead only strives for truth and as such finds thine heart. And in Hebrews 11.33 we see that it is the righteous and faithful that have the inner strength to subdue the beast and note that within this number of the verse we have the number 33 which equates to the crown chakra. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. Our next card is number 12, the hanged man. This card represents the soul that is spiritually preparing to begin the ascent back to God consciousness. The number 12 represents the unreunited trinity on the material plane. The hanging on the cross represents the complete abandonment of all 
that has held the soul in bondage to the material plane. The hanging man is connected to Jesus on the cross and Odin on the tree. It is the complete surrendering of the soul to the divine within, removing all the mental and spiritual anchors that prevent the soul from ascending the gates. Once the soul has removed these mental and spiritual shackles, the internal path becomes illuminated. The number 13 death card has been covered in depth in previous videos, and as discussed, this is symbolic of the death of the physical container upon reunification with the divine. Number 14 is connected to temperance. Temperance is symbolic for the divine path of the soul and the soul's covenant as we see 1 and 4 equate to 5. This path is being represented on the card beside the angel and leads into the mountains where there is a shining crown symbolized. This is showing that if the covenant is upheld, the inner path is revealed and the divinity within the soul will be realized. Divine consciousness is within the ether and is being poured from the top cup to fill the bottom cup on the lower ethereal planes. We can also see the sun represented in the circle with the dot upon the angel's head and the head is glowing, symbolic of the light of God transmuted through the sun. And the triangle on the angel's heart is representing the trinity and this shows if the correct path can be found then the soul is crowned with Christ consciousness. Number 15 is related to the Devil card and as discussed in depth in previous videos is symbolic for the physical bondage of the soul that remains in ignorance controlled by the base energies of the material plane. The number 16 Tower card is related to the ethereal as 1 and 6 equate to 7. This is a highly emotive card and looks very connected to the physical and in some ways it is for it is showing that it is the shaking of our physical foundations that cause the soul to discover inner strength. Again we see this also relayed with Daniel and the lions where in the darkest hours of despair Daniel learns the truth of himself and therefore discovers his immortality. The male and female twin souls are shown falling from the tower. On the male side there are 12 golden leaves and on the female side she has 10. The 12 is symbolic for the unreunited twin souls on the material plane and the number 10 shows the covenants of the twin soul and the infinite cycle of its evolution. This card is symbolic for the destined events that the soul cannot avoid shown by the lightning bolt from above. And it is these events of pain and disruption that the opportunity of spiritual growth and inner strength can be found. Card number 17 is the star and we have discussed this card in detail within previous videos also. The star is symbolic of the soul's potential illumination at the time of the cycle when the light of the creator symbolized by the eight pointed star returns to us. Number 18 is the moon card. Again we have discussed this card in detail in previous videos. The moon represents the ethereal plane and energies that govern the emotions of the soul. Card number 19 is the sun and represents the physical plane but also the potential of God manifests through the soul onto the material plane. The child wears seven flowers upon the head representing the ethereal self. There is also a red feather upon the head symbolizing Orion and the Christ light being transmuted through the sun and illuminating and purifying the soul symbolized by the child on the white horse. The red cloth is representing the divinity within the soul and the four sunflowers represent earth and foundation. Number 20 is the judgment card. This is the equivalent of the weighing of the heart ceremony when the light of the creator returns to fully illuminate each soul. The number 20 is also connected to the heart on the ancient Egyptian number key. So again we see that it is through the heart full of light that we are granted access through the sixth gate to reunite with the divine. On the card we see that the souls are represented in a grey bluish colour representing their physical containers. As we saw with the death card when we are manifest 
in the physical form on the material plane, we are essentially in death. And this is what is represented in the judgment card and why the souls are shown in coffins. We can also see across the water that the ethereal plane is represented and there are also souls that wait in judgment and this is because the light of the Creator illuminates both the physical and ethereal planes and those souls who have passed over into the ethereal are also weighed. Psalms 107 20 He sends His word and heals them and delivers them from their graves. John 5 28 Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. The trumpet is symbolic of the divine resonance that awakens the souls and brings with it healing and protection symbolized by the flag with the red cross. We see again a connection to the Freemasons and the Red Cross, as they have within their organization the Order of the Red Cross. Lastly, we have number 21, the World Card. And we see in the number 21, it is representing the Trinity that have reunited and now separated once again at the beginning of a cycle at the height of consciousness. The world card is symbolic of what all souls in higher consciousness have in their power. The female is represented in the middle with the two scrolls representing the word of God and the complete divine knowledge they now have access to. She is also symbolic of the female creation forces that birth the souls onto the material plane. Around her is a wreath representing the full cycle being completed and the soul has now been rewarded with knowledge and the full understanding of their divinity. On the top and bottom of the wreath we see that the infinity symbol is being represented. Therefore we have a connection to the number 88 and the male and female twin souls depicted here also. Around the outside of the wreath we see a man and three animals. The man represents the male twin soul birthed through into the new cycle with the female creational forces. The eagle is symbolic of the ethereal energies and the ether, while the lion is symbolic of inner strength and courage. The bull is referring to inner wisdom. Both animals are also representing the physical attributes of the soul. So now thanks to the ancient Egyptian number key, and the other keys hidden as symbols within the tarot cards, we have revealed the story of ourselves, the story that has been stolen and coveted by religious institutions and secret organizations. However, we have only just scratched the surface of this truth of who we are. And that truth is we are much more than just our physical containers, but are powerful beyond our imaginings each soul with part of the divine within us. And it is this divine spark within us that is illuminated when the light of Orion and Christ consciousness returns at the end of the cycle. And it is then that our hearts are weighed and the worthiness of the soul is measured. Each of us has traversed this journey over the eons to get to the moment in time we now stand. In the next video, I will reveal the ancient Egyptian number key that has allowed us to unlock this knowledge about who we really are. Mark 4.22 For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad.